people are thrilled that spring is just around the corner. My colleagues are already shedding their coats, removing their winter tires, and talking about the day when they'll be able to finally wear shorts and sandals. Some are buying seeds for their gardens. Others are making summer plans to visit the cottage. The days are getting longer as the sun coats the northern hemisphere with warm rays of light. It's only normal for people to be happy. Not me though. I hate spring. I hate it with every fiber of my being. You could even say that I'm terrified of it. That's because I know the truth. I know what's hiding in the snowbanks. I know what will happen when they thaw. Every day they get lower and lower. The snow melts and the streams of water leak into the street like blood from an open wound. In my nightmares, I can see dozens of hands reaching out from their snowy graves. I can imagine the agonized looks on their bluish faces. My heart pounds hard against my chest every time I walk past a snowbank. And I wonder how many of them are hidden within. As birds begin their migration home, I grow ever more anxious. I lie awake at night, thinking about what will happen when they find the bodies. <laughs> I just hope I didn't leave any evidence behind. For years, I've been working at a pawn shop in a seedy part of town. I see all types of weirdos here. Peeping Toms, drug addicts, wannabe thugs, and even known criminals. It's not hard to tell who's selling stolen shit to make a quick buck. But hey, it's not my place to judge. No. I just buy and sell. Technically, I've got to hold new infantry for a month before selling it, in case stuff gets reported stolen. <sighs> Let the cops sort through that shit though. I've never seen one brave enough to come around these parts anyways. Ted, my favourite customer, was different from the usual scumbags. Cleanly groomed, sharply dressed and polite. He was the polar opposite of the trash that usually came through the squeaky alleyway door. The first time he visited, he looked frazzled and I thought he was going to piss himself in fear. I assumed he was just some tourist who took a wrong turn or something. In actuality, he was doing the pawn shop circuit around town, trying to find rare daggers and swords. I sold him a couple of nice pieces, and he rewarded me with an unexpected tip. Ted returned every couple of weeks. He'd sharpen those daggers and buy a few new ones. I was surprised by how fast he kept dulling his blades. I figured he was practicing on fruit or wood. One day I asked him about it, fully expecting him to give me a lame-ass answer, like he <laughs> role-played as a ninja or something. Ted looked me dead in the eyes and, without a hint of deceit or emotion, answered, Nothing dulls a blade faster than human flesh.
construction on my brand new condo finished this summer. Not wasting a second, I broke lease on my musky apartment and moved in as soon as possible. I rather enjoyed knowing I was the first resident to live there. There was no wear and tear, no smoke stains on the walls, and no damage to the structure. The only issue was a light clattering sound whenever I used the commercial sink in my laundry room. I rarely used it, so I didn't bring up the problem to the contractors. Everything else worked perfectly, and my home was as sterile as an operating table. After a few months, I began noticing water pooling at the foot of my shower. The drain must have been clogged. I took my tools, unscrewed the shower drain, and peered inside. I could see a collection of fibers bunched up in the pipes. Reaching in with an unfolded coat hanger, I pulled out mountains of dirty, blonde hair clogging the pipes. I live alone. I don't have any pets. I haven't entertained a lady in over a year, and I've been bald since I was 27. The odd phenomena got me thinking about the sink in the laundry room. I detached the aerator, placed my hand under the faucet, and turned on the water. Dozens of molars came flying out, slipping through my fingers and into the sink, bouncing up and down until ultimately falling down the drain. Oh, on a completely unrelated note, I have a beautiful, fully furnished, barely used condo for sale, located in downtown Detroit. Anyone interested? Mum freaked out when she saw the cuts on my arms last month. She thought I was hurting myself. My stepfather was too much of a prick to tell her the truth. He stood in the corner arms crossed, watching as she gripped me by the shoulders and tried to literally shake some sense into me. Even as she bawled her eyes out, holding me close to her and begging me not to hurt myself anymore, the man kept his stupid ass mouth shut. He shot me this threatening look so that I'd do the same. Mum set up an emergency counselling session. After a few weeks, when she saw that no new cuts had appeared, she wholeheartedly thanked the therapist for saving my life. Meanwhile, her husband did what he always does. He played dumb. <laughs> She'll be so disappointed in me tomorrow morning when she finds her claw marks all over me again. <sighs> It'd be so much easier if we tied her up on the full moon. <laughs>